know that kid is. I'm Gary the Vacuum Triple Witch. And I've got a temporary setup that uh, normally the stream cam would be above my monitor, but now I direct it to the microphone stand <coughs> because the Kio Pro is not uh, really reliable, so I used it as a temporary fa face cam. And uh, what I'm gonna show you is the ZX Spectrum Plus 2 modifications that I did. First of all, uh, yeah, this is uh, this partially disassembled. I was uh, I was in the process of uh, going over those mods, but uh, but the bench cam failed. <laughs> I'm doing the recording again with the stream cam as the temporary bench cam. <laughs> so let's uh, first of all let's take a look at what I've done with the ZX Spectrum. First was the electrolytic cap replacement. All those electrolytics, those pesky little buggers, they went to. To trash and uh, I, uh, I replaced them with new ones. Then the tape transport, uh, dehum and amplifier power on uh, player record uh, modification. I will go over that one soon because uh, that's uh, that's a mod that has been done with a uh, relay, but uh, I didn't use any relay for that. I uh, I did it my way. <laughs> The, the carry tech mod <laughs> audio and video modulation fix and uh, audio video connector pin free mode change uh, we'll go over that with a schematic and of course the um, T45 T7 reversal fix that in the transistors uh, I uh, that was covered in the previous video so uh, what have I done with the board? So let's start with uh, let's start with uh, the printed circuit board. Take it out, put the enclosure on the side. So uh, basically, it's the LK7 uh, to LK8 uh, repositioning. This mod. Uh, routes the audio signal to the pin number number three on the audio video connector without touching uh, the, the remaining uh, jumpers and uh, then the diodes uh, for the brightness uh, feedback uh, the diodes and the resistors uh, May or may not appear in the original, in in this uh, specimen of spectrum, they were already on the board, so the the video connector marked uh, RGB. It was wired for the so-called standard uh, mode uh, instead of the parallel mode. But uh, I, uh, by uh, replacing the audio connector, I could very easily make it a fully fledged uh, Peritel, uh, also known as Euroscart. I will show it to you on uh, on the schematic. Yeah, schematic. <laughs> One moment, please. And uh, this is another PCB mod, uh, the C31 mod, the audio uh, coupling capacitor that was originally meant um, to feed the audio signal into combined uh, high frequency, very high frequency signal um, that feeds um, into the TV's uh, aerial input. But uh, what was done wrong in the original design was that uh, the audio signal modulated not the 
No and the composite video uh, signal uh, for the uh, FM uh, modulator and head uh, only, but, uh, but it, it modulated the brightness signal for the for the composite video encoder chip. It was uh, routed into pin number eight, and. Uh, the mod, uh, what the mod was uh, about was uh, rerouting this uh, audio signal to the input of um, of the FM modulator. <coughs> Let's go over the schematic. So here is the original circuit diagram. Uh, for the for the ZX Spectrum Plus 2, starting with the audio signals, uh, they combine the, um, the record and playback uh, signals. They are summed right here and uh, and routed uh, all the way to the to the LK8 uh, jumper that uh, can feed the signal into the pin number three of the of the video connector, LK7 would uh, feed the the signal back from the from the skirt cable into the brightness signal on the on the encoder or or even uh, somewhere earlier but uh, anyway the the cable that i uh, got with uh, with this ZX Spectrum had uh, those diodes and resistors uh, integrated uh, just in case it was uh, meant to be used with um, a ZX Spectrum with um, with them uh, not installed. In this case, uh, in case of this uh, particular device, uh, they were already in the board, so no need to have the redundant uh, diodes in the cables. That's why I removed them. And uh, that's also what freed the pin number three to be used as uh, the audio signal. And it also allowed me to use uh, the standard uh, free pin, uh, the oldest, uh, the oldest version, the the free pin, then uh, connector, as uh, a uh, composite video and uh, and mono audio uh, signal output um, for recording and. Uh, for feeding it uh, into into a uh, analog capture card, uh, or just for using uh, composite-only TVs and uh, and monitors, so that would be for the audio-video uh, connector uh, mod. Now let's go over the C31 mod. This is uh, C31. It feeds the output of uh, of this uh, of this uh, FM modulator chip. This is um, MC thirteen seventy six. It is the audio modulator chip that uh, has um, the combined uh, audio in and uh, audio out uh, signals and. Uh, it has a built-in transistor and the emitter output of this transistor goes uh, to the C31 chip and then it feeds into the luminance uh, luminance input uh, on the TEA2000 uh, uh, composite video encoder chip and uh, by this, uh, 
the audio signal level will affect uh, the video output of the TEA 2000, which is total bullshit. And what we need to do is uh, removing the connection with pin number 8 and rerouting this capacitor, it's very easy, to the emitter of, uh, of this transistor and then it will act <coughs> as uh, an uh, amplifier with uh, video signal fed uh, through the base but audio signal fed through the emitter and this will feed into the UHF uh, head ultra high frequency which can uh, feed into the TV's antenna with both uh, video and audio signal and uh, this will this will prevent uh, the composite video uh, if you if you derive the composite video by the way this is one of the transistors that uh, were to be inverted uh, to be put uh, 180 degrees it, uh, it had uh, its uh, emitter and col collector uh, swapped so uh, it distorted uh, the composite video output signal quite a lot now it's okay and uh, and then on the pin number one we would have the um, undistorted and uh, no audio modulated uh, video signal than the composite video and let's get back to the bench cam and uh, go over the the tape transport then the temporary bench cam and uh, and here we've got the tape transport one moment please let me grab a screwdriver to to show you commencing discombobulation So this is the audio board with uh, with the Western uh, isostat type uh, record and uh, playback switch. I replaced all the electrolytic capacitors, and uh, instead of the something like uh, 100 microfarad, uh, I used. Uh, a beefier filter cap uh, on the audio circuitry. Let me grab the schematic. So here's the mod explained. Um, originally, the five volts DC fed into the board uh, through the L301 uh, inductor mm, the, the greenish one, this is the L301 and uh, C322 470 microfarad capacitor through the leaf, leaf spring contact this one Let's go. Let's get a better view on that. This uh, leaf spring uh, activates uh, when I uh, when I press the playback uh, playback key or record key or or rewind and uh, fast forward. So any time the tape deck is in use it will go on but when it's not used uh, like uh, like in the current example now that 
we mostly use this uh, ZX Spectrum uh, with the Compact Flash uh, interface card. And there's no need for the type deck. <coughs> but just in case, let's make it available without um, that uh, horrible um, humming sound uh, from the audio line. And that sound uh, comes from the playback amplifier, one of the um, operational amplifiers on, uh, on this chip. Uh, it originally is a, a very high gain uh, and uh, filter circuit. Um, it mostly works on uh, on the impedances of uh, this 22 nanofarad capacitor and uh, 33 picofarad uh, in the feedback loop um, and uh, the 2 megaohm uh, resistor provides the DC bias uh, for the negative input and uh, and this uh, is tied uh, to DC somewhere somewhere in between uh, plus five and uh, and the ground. I don't exactly remember the the division ratio. Uh, it was not uh, it was uh, not uh, half the the rail voltage. Uh, it was somewhere lower. So, what I was uh, about to do on uh, on this type transport, it was uh, removing the R three O six filter resistor. This resistor was originally placed right here. I uh, I removed it and uh, added a 100 ohm uh, resistor that feeds uh, the, the power to the amplifier from behind, uh, from after the, the leaf spring contact. I also replaced uh, this capacitor with something like uh, <coughs> 470 microfarad for better filtering. And it does the job pretty nicely. <laughs> And no relays involved, because originally this would be cut and uh, a relay would be installed to, with uh, with the coil uh, parallel to the motor. But I uh, I just found a way to avoid uh, using any relays altogether. I just did it with a single resistor and no cutting traces on the PCB. None of that uh, irreversible damage rubbish. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, that's uh, let's call it the Caritech mod. Hello, kitty. <laughs> this is Coco, the the lab assistant at Caritech Electronics. <laughs> and that's uh, that's for the very simple. A very simple type deck uh, modification on the ZX Plus 2. I hope that Sam Battle sees that. <laughs> I, I hope that uh, the, the ZX Spectrum uh, users and modders community sees that. So let's Let's put the, the all specky back together. And uh, that would be it for the for the modifications uh, that I did on this one. Yeah. ZX Spectrum Caritech mod. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do it on the bench uh, uh, because I we've seen it already on the previous video. Well, catch you next time. <laughs>